Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Adon Olam Messianic Congregation. Uh, I forgot to mention last week, did y'all notice that we have a new and larger Ner Tamid, or eternal light? Um, <clears throat> It's hard to miss. Um, I t thank you. I, I took it for granted. I think it's actually um, from Israel. Uh, we um, went to a lady's house who had it, and um, it had been given to her as a gift, and she didn't know what it was. And so um, we put in a word, and uh, she actually ended up passing away, and uh, we talked to her daughter, and they gifted it to the congregation. So. Um, that was really a blessing and uh, we hope that it looks good here but we hope that one day it will look good in Greenville South Carolina uh, in the midst of the Jewish community where uh, we uh, desire to minister it's a little bit more of a challenge these days because uh, both synagogues have gotten uh, new rabbis that I have not uh, met before the conservative synagogue just got their new rabbi and so uh, that's going to prove interesting uh, in our uh, interactions in the future, but we are trusting that the Lord uh, will continue to use this ministry to bring the message of the Jewishness of the Messiah uh, to the uh, Jewish community in, in Greenville. <clears throat> I hope that you had a great week and that this service uh, will just be an opportunity to uh, come together in the presence of the Lord and allow Him uh, to, to minister and to uh, help you to rest at the end of the past week and prepare you uh, for what is yet to come. Uh, we are glad to have you with us as a Messianic Jewish congregation. Uh, we emphasize the Jewishness of our Messiah and the Jewishness of the New Covenant faith. And one of the ways we do that uh, is by using Hebrew in our prayers. Uh, and in our songs, but we make an effort to translate because we see ourselves uh, as a community uh, kind of like uh, the way Paul described it in Ephesians 2, the one new man, Jew and Gentile, coming together uh, to worship as one. So we uh, trust that the Lord will bless you in our service this evening. We're going to begin our service in the traditional way, and that's with the lighting of the Sabbath candle. So I'm going to ask Rosalie Bowling uh, to come up to the front to usher in the Sabbath for us and ask you to direct your attention to the front at this time. As I often explain, uh, it is traditional to have uh, two candles uh, is largely what we find on the for the Sabbath candles because of two primary instructions in the scriptures. Uh, we are to show bear, to keep our guard the Sabbath, and to uh, zahur, to um, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Thank you, Rosalie. <laughs> and now I'm going to call up our cantor, Neil Bowling, and ask you to please stand for the prayer known as the Shema, uh, which is based on Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And once again, as a community, uh, we proclaim the oneness of our God. Uh, Yeshua referred to the first line of the Shema as the greatest commandment. We'll chant the prayer in Hebrew and then recite the English translation, followed by the Via Hafta. Uh, the verses that come afterwards in Deuteronomy 6. Together the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. And now the Via Hafta. Via Hafta, eight Adonai Elohecha, Bekol Evacha, Ubeko Nashecha, Ubeko Meodecha, Vehayu. Hadevarim ha'ele, asher nochi misalcha hayom al levavecha, v'shinatam levonecha, v'tibarta ba'am, v'shivika bevetecha, uvelechtecha v'derek, ukshavaka ukumecha. Ukshartam leot al yadecha vehayu leitotefot bein heinecha uktaptam amazazov beitecha uvisha arecha veyahavta lo recha kamocha amen. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Please join me as we open our service in prayer. Eloheinu, Elohavo, Tenu, Elohav Raham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov. Our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to uh, come together, Lord, for this Mikra Kodesh. Uh, this holy convocation, this sacred assembly uh, that you call us to on a weekly basis, Lord, uh, as we seek to truly understand what it means to enter into your rest, Lord. Uh, as we ask you to bless this time, we ask you to uh, just help us, Lord, to be equipped for the challenges in the week ahead and also, Lord, to be equipped to bring the message of your love to our Jewish people and to a world that so desperately needs to hear and understand it. And Lord, we just ask for your anointing on this service, on the singing, on the dancing, the worship, the praise, the message, the liturgy, the fellowship, every aspect of the service, Lord. We dedicate it to you. <laughs> As Lord, I just ask you to speak to the hearts of all who are here. Uh, Lord, if uh, they need a touch from you tonight, Lord, I pray that they would experience, whether it's in the area of uh, an emotional situation or relational or, or spiritual or financial, Lord, whatever it might be, uh, we believe, Lord, that you are able uh, to meet that need, to uh, just speak to our hearts, to open eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, and hearts to receive from you tonight as we dedicate this service to you. And we ask these things in our Messiah, Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and now I'm going to call up Eli Scott uh, to make our announcements for the week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. And welcome to Adonai Messianic Congregation. If you are a first time visitor this evening, please raise your hand so that we might recognize you. Good buddy. Okay. We have new calendars available in the gift shop at a price of $10. These calendars start in September of 2022 and go through the end of 2023. We also want to let you know that Paul Wilber will be at Beth Hillel in Atlanta on Sunday, August 21st at 4 p.m. We sing more Paul Wilber songs here at AOMC than probably anyone else. You can see Janiel Scott for more details. We pray the Lord's blessings upon you and hope that you will feel His sweet spirit as you worship with us. Once again, Shabbat Shalom. 
Thank you, Eli. I realize my grammar on the Paul Wilbur announcement isn't the greatest because I said we sing more. I, I meant to say he is the musician that we sing more of than any other musician. But the way it sounds is it sounds like we sing more Paul Wilbur song than anybody else. But Paul Wilbur probably sings more Paul Wilbur songs than anybody else. I'm just um, criticizing my grammar. Um, just because I can. And now we will chant the traditional prayer known as the Vishamru, which means, and they shall keep. Uh, this prayer is uh, the Hebrew of Exodus 31, verses 16 and 17. And we will chant the Hebrew, and then we will have the English uh, translation with a Messianic paragraph added at the end. The Vishamru. Vishamru Together, the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat to observe it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from work and rested. And we know our Messiah Yeshua observed the Shabbat. In the New Covenant Scriptures, we are told, as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Amen. Now we are going to enter into the Scripture portion of our service, and I'll call forward our ARC opener, Randall Anderson, uh, as well as Fred Scott, who will be leading us in this portion of the service. And we would ask that if you would please stand as the ark is opened. The ark is the traditional name for the furniture that houses the scroll, uh, known as the Torah, which contains the first five books of the Bible, known as the five books of Moses. Uh, the term ark also reminds us of the ark of the covenant or the ark of the testimony where the presence of the Lord dwelt. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forward, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you, for from Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord out of Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Unique is our God, great is our Lord, holy and revered is his name. 
Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom and you are exalted as head over all. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mount. For the Lord our God is his holy. Amen. I will now ask our scripture readers to come forward. He who blessed our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless David, son of Yeshua, and Barbara, daughter of Yeshua, who have come up to honor God in his word. Amen. May the Holy One bless them and their families and send blessing and prosperity on all the work of their hands. Amen. 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 And now for the blessing before the reading of the Torah. Bless the Lord who is blessed. Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Bless the Lord who is blessed forever and ever. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaAmin Vanatam Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai no Torah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all peoples and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. This is the 16th day of the fifth month on the Hebrew calendar of the month of Av. Our Torah reading for this evening is taken from Deut Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. In Hebrew, the name of the book is Devarim. We'll be reading from chapter 7, verses 6 through 9, found on page 205 in the Complete Jewish Bible. For you are a people set apart as holy for Adonai your God. Adonai your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his own unique treasure. Adonai did not set his heart on you or choose you because you numbered more than any other people. On the contrary, you were the fewest of all people. Rather, it was because Adonai loved you and because he wanted to keep the oath which he had sworn to your ancestors that Adonai brought you out with a strong hand and redeemed you from a life of slavery under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. From this, you can know that Adonai, your God, is indeed God, the faithful God who keeps his covenant and extends his grace to those who love him and observe him through mitzvot to a thousand generations. Amen. The blessing following the reading of the Torah. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet Vachai Olam Nata Betucheinu Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and life everlasting planted in our midst. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. And now for the congregational response following the reading of the Torah. Be'yad Moshe, Eitz Chaim Hi, Lemachazikim Ba, Betochei HaMeushar, Derachei Ha, Darchei Noam, Bechol Otivotei Ha, Shalom Hashiveinu Adonai Elecha 
before the reading of the Haftarah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose good prophets, delighting in their words which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chose the Torah, your servant Moses, your people Israel, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. Amen. Amen. Our Haftarah portion for this evening is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. In Hebrew, the name of the book is Yeshyahu Hanavi. We'll be reading from chapter 40, verses 1 through 5, found on page 495 in the Complete Jewish Bible. Comfort and keep comforting my people, says your God. Tell Yerushalayim to take heart. Proclaim to her that she has completed her time of service, that her guilt has been paid off, that she has received at the hand of Adonai double for all her sins. A voice cries out, clear a road through the desert for Adonai, level a highway in the Arava for our God. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill lowered, the bumpy places made level, and the crags become a plain. Then the glory of Adonai will be revealed. All humankind together will see it, for the mouth of Adonai has spoken. Amen. Amen. The blessing following the reading of the Haftarah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, rock of all ages, righteous throughout all generations. You are the faithful God, promising and then performing, first speaking, then fulfilling, for all your words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for no word of yours shall remain unfulfilled. You are a faithful and merciful God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who are faithful in fulfilling your words. Amen. Amen. And now for the blessing before the reading of the New Covenant Scriptures. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lenu Mashiach Yeshua, Vahadi broshel habrit hachadasha, Baruch atah Adonai, Nozain habrit hachadasha. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the words of the renewed covenant. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Our Rit HaKadoshah portion for tonight is from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. Again, we'll be reading from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31, found on page 1279 of the Complete Jewish Bible. One of the Torah teachers came up and heard them engaged in the discussion. Seeing that Yeshua answered them well, he asked him, which is the most important mitzvah of them all? Yeshua answered, the most important is Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you are to love Adonai your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your understanding and with all your strength. The second one is this. You are to love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other mitzvah greater than this. Amen. 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 
And now the blessing following the reading of the New Covenant Scriptures. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lenu chadevar chaemet, Vachaye olam natan betocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, Noten habrit hachadasha, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of the truth and life everlasting planted in our midst. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. When the ark rested, Moses would say, Return, O Lord, to the myriads of Israel's families. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and your mighty ark. Clothe your priests with righteousness. May those who have experienced your faithful love shout for joy. Hallelujah. For the sake of your servant David, do not delay the return of your Messiah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who gives us the living word in the Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. When the ark is closed, you may be seated. Please join me in, in reciting, He being merciful. He being merciful forgives iniquity and does not destroy. Frequently he turns away his anger and does not stir up all his wrath. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving and exceedingly kind to all who call upon you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Yeshua, our Messiah, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Well, with what we did in the singing, I'm not sure I need to explain to you that last Friday was the ninth of Av, which is a time of mourning uh, in Judaism because it's observed as the day of the destruction of both temples. Uh, we've also been explaining this uh, each week for about the last month. But now we're past that time. So why are we still talking about it? Why am I still talking about it? And the reason is because for the next seven weeks, we will be reading Haftarah portions uh, called the Haftarot of Consolation uh, that have been selected by the rabbis to remind the Jewish people that despite the destruction of the temples, despite the judgment of the Lord that that reflected, there are numerous, numerous prophecies about their future reconciliation and restoration. Uh, one of them is Zechariah 8.19, which we've uh, talked about in the past, where four fasts uh, that are tied to, that seemingly are tied to the destruction of the temples will be replaced by times of joy and rejoicing. <laughs> Excuse me, frequently we find ourselves <laughs> in a valley or in a pit, going through a difficult time. But one of the things about being in a valley is generally that's a place between two mountains. And if we look up, we will see that there is still yet a mountaintop ahead. And that is very much the relationship of God and uh, the Jewish people. Uh, they, they, they experience the mountaintop experiences, but there are also um, the valleys, the temptation of this world. But the beauty is that we find throughout the scriptures that our God who knows the beginning from the end knows that there will also be a time of restoration, that there are promises of blessings yet to come. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, we uh, thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, we thank you for the revelation that you have provided in uh, your word to us, in, in the Bible, in the revelation to Moses and the prophets and uh, the New Covenant writings. And Lord, uh, we just pray that you would speak to us tonight as we uh, look and desire to know your eternal truths uh, as we study these words, that we might draw closer to you, that we might be more conformed to the image of your Son, and that might, we might more effectively uh, be able to live out the truths uh, that you have revealed. As I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer, I ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. 
Last week we discussed the first portion of Devarim, uh, or Deuteronomy, uh, which was entitled Devarim, uh, because the Hebrew uh, names of the first portions of the books of the Torah are always the same as the book. And the portion ended with the Lord's assurance in Deuteronomy 3, verse 22, that he would fight on behalf of the children of Israel. However, in this week's portion, the Lord warns the people that if they make idols, they will be scattered and quickly disappear from the land that they are about to possess. So the Lord warns the people as they're going into the land, as they're getting ready to experience this blessing, uh, he also gives them the warning that they can be taken out of the land. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a, a comedian's line when uh, his children are giving him a hard time and he says, I brought you into this world and I can take you out of it. And it's this idea that just because you're entering into the land of promise, the land of blessing, doesn't mean that you are guaranteed to stay there. Uh, it is dependent upon what they do uh, when they are in the land. And as we know, the scattering, in fact, did come about. Uh, yet uh, today, Isaiah 43, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah 43 describes a future regathering of the Jewish people to the land that, has, that God has given to them. Isaiah 43 verse 1 says in the King James, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. And four verses later, the Lord says through Isaiah, Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. So we see these verses of reconciliation and restoration uh, that we are even seeing in our day today. But we also know that there is an adversary. The Hebrew word for adversary is Satan, uh, Hasatan, the adversary, or sometimes in the English, Satan. And ironically, he seems, <laughs> excuse me, he seems to be using the fulfilled prophecy of the return of the Jewish people to the land, not as an example of God's faithfulness, but as a reason to question God's faithfulness. I know that doesn't make any sense, but let me explain. Satan tries to convince the world that they should question the right of the Jewish people to dwell in the land that their God has given to them. He really wants them permanently driven out so that God will be guilty of failing to keep his promises. This is really the adversary's primary objective in every situation, to convince the world that God cannot be trusted. That, that he will not fulfill his promises uh, that he has made to the Jewish people. But the adversary will not succeed. Because God will fulfill every promise that he has ever made, including every promise he has made to the Jewish people. Now for a long time we believed that simply by faith. But now we believe it by math. Because when we look at a map, we see the nation of Israel right in the center if it's a map of the world and flat, which I know uh, most people are looking at computer screens these days. But the reality is that our God is the faithful God. And, and we know that even because of events that have taken place in recent times. In 1903, the Jewish people were offered a place for a homeland. Anybody know where it was? It was in Kenya um, as a refuge from Russian pogroms. But the Jewish dream remained the land promised to them in the scriptures. The land given to them 14 years later in the Balfour Declaration of 1917 following World War I. Afterwards, <coughs> the Arabs decided that the land should have been given to them and have repeatedly sought to drive the Jewish people out of the land. 
but God had other ideas. As Israel would declare its independence as a Jewish state, 31 years later, 31 years after the Balfour Declaration on May 14, 1948, and is Hasatan, the adversary, happy about this? No. The following day, six Arab armies attacked the fledgling Jewish state. Uh, as you know, if you've been here, when we've talked about uh, the history of the nation of Israel, when we've celebrated the anniversaries uh, of her independence, uh, her declaration of independence. And the Jewish people did survive uh, this onslaught of the Arab armies, but it wasn't until 19 years later, during the Six-Day War in 1967, that the Jewish people regained control of Jerusalem for the first time in over 1,800 years. So when we look at these events, we realize that the promises that we find in scriptures, whether promises to the Jewish people or promises to the followers of Messiah, we can be confident that every one of those promises will be fulfilled. Because if God was able to bring about the restoration of the Jewish people after they were scattered all over, now we shouldn't be surprised because as we saw, it was prophesied in Isaiah thousands of years ago that he would bring them from the east and the west, from the north and the south, uh, and bring them from afar and restore them in the land. Now let's talk about the portions. Uh, this week's Torah portion is called Ba'et Kanan, uh, and it begins in Deuteronomy 3, verse 23. Ba'et Kanan means, and I pleaded, referring to Moses begging the Lord to allow him to enter the promised land. But the Lord has declared that it will be Yehoshua, Joshua, who will lead uh, the children of Israel, not Moshe, not Moses, but Joshua, who will lead the children of Israel across the Jordan into the land of promise. Last week we mentioned that the book of Deuteronomy is written in the form of a treaty uh, of that time called a suzerainty treaty, uh, executed between a conquering suzerain or king. Uh, in this case, uh, that would be the Lord and his conquered vassals, who would be the Israelites, but often by extension, all of God's creation. The first three chapters of Devarim contain two introductory parts. Uh, as we saw last week, the preamble and the historical prologue. And this week's portion contains some of these stipulations, the requirements for the conquered subjects to continue to enjoy the blessings of the suzerain. We also mentioned last week that God wants our hearts. The Hebrew word for heart, lev, we said was found almost 50 times in the book of Deuteronomy. It's actually found six times in this week's Torah portion. But the Hebrew Shema, or a variation of that, is found 22 times in the five chapters of this week's portion. In the first verse of Deuteronomy verse 4, in the introductions to the stipulations, Shema, which is sometimes translated as hear, really means hearken or obey. Kind of like when a parent says, listen to me. Uh, it, it's not about simply hearing the words. It's the idea that they want you to do what they are saying. Deuteronomy 4 verse 1 says, Now Israel, Shema, hearken to the statutes and rulings I am teaching you. Why? So that you may follow them. His people are expected to live a certain way based on his truths so that you will live. Then you will go in and take possession of the land that the, the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Who was the land given to? In Genesis 13, verses 14 and 15, God told Abraham that all the land you can see when you look to the north and the south and the east and the west from where you are standing, I have given it to you and your descendants forever. And um, <clears throat> we realize now that the land belongs to the children of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Will the land always belong to them? Yes. Will they always be dwelling in it? No, as we've seen in much of the last 2,000 years. 
We mentioned earlier, scattering could be a consequence for disobedience. But there's also the promise of regathering. Uh, we see this in, uh, as the Jewish people are returning to the land, uh, as was described in the verses in Isaiah 43. And once again, is Hasatan happy about this? No. He doesn't like it one bit and is doing all he can to keep the pressure on the Jewish people dwelling in the land. Israel is constantly under pressure to give away parts of the land that God has given to them. Uh, while Israel, for example, while Israel has controlled the Temple Mount since 1967, many people today think it belongs to the Palestinians because they act as though it belongs to them. Getting back to the Torah portion, <clears throat> another part of the introduction to the stipulations is the Israelites are told in Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 that they are not to add to the statutes and judgments nor subtract from them. Can the vassals change the instructions of the king? No. You would think that it would be pretty obvious that man is not going to be able to improve on God's revelation by adding to it. But both the Jewish people and many in the body of believers have not let that stop them. The Jewish people have created additional requirements through the interpretations of the rabbis, such as separate dishes for milk and meat. Many churches have also instituted requirements that are not found in the scriptures. Can you think of any examples, perhaps? Uh, many of you have more ex experience uh, in, in the church world. Some do not permit drinking of alcohol. Uh, others, dancing is uh, forbidden. Or even use of musical instruments in some cases. And in fairness, I should point out that many Orthodox Jewish congregations do not permit musical instruments either. The Jewish world and the church world are also guilty of taking away from the scriptures as well. I grew up uh, as, uh, in, as Reformed Jewish, and most Reformed Jewish people do not treat the dietary laws of the Torah as meaningful today. Uh, my favorite food growing up uh, was a ham sandwich. Uh, and so it just gives you, and, and nobody uh, in, in my family, even distant aunts, uncles, and cousins, uh, ever thought that there was any issue uh, associated with that, even though uh, obviously the ham sandwich comes from the pig, which is one of the animals uh, that we are told is unclean in um, the, uh, the Torah portions, uh, Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. I probably don't have to tell you that many of the people in the church uh, have concluded that virtually most of the instructions that we find in the Torah uh, are no longer uh, meaningful today. Uh, despite Yeshua saying in Matthew 5 verses 17 and 18, this is the King James translation once again, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've come, I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Uh, and I was talking to somebody who was uh, here last week trying to decide where the Lord would have him uh, to become a, a member and become involved. Uh, and he was telling me that he pretty much understood that everything had been fulfilled. And I told him, well, if you come back enough, you'll find out why we don't um, think that is the case. And I often <coughs> do it just by simply asking the question, do you believe Messiah is coming back? Uh, and if you do, then everything hasn't yet been fulfilled. Uh, also, there's the uh, technicality that the heavens and earth um, still exist. Uh, and he uh, also mentioned that heaven and earth would pass um, before uh, everything was fulfilled. Uh, but we also have to be careful as Messianic believers that we aren't so uh, confident in our understanding uh, and judgmental in those who have not been taught or have not bought into this viewpoint uh, that we make the same kind of mistakes that we add to the requirements or take away 
because certain requirements are inconvenient or we don't understand why we are to do them. Uh, it is definitely a challenge to live out our faith trying to be obedient to the Lord's instructions. Uh, and we also have the challenge of being careful that we don't become legalistic, that we don't uh, see the reason for doing these things is by uh, trying to become righteous in the Lord's sight. Because there's only one way that we can be righteous in the Lord's sight, right? And that's by Him seeing the righteousness of Messiah in us. Now, that's not my opinion. That's uh, according to the words of the Apostle Paul uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Uh, one reason many in the church world take away uh, from God's revelation is they've been taught that works uh, are really not nearly as important. What really matters is grace. Uh, you have probably heard somebody say something along those lines. And they'll even find a scripture verse to quote uh, to back it up. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, uh, which says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And they usually quit right there, not realizing the next verse is all about works. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And that's why James tells us in James 2, verse 20, Yaakov says that faith without works is dead. Um, so sometimes all we need is the line that we use in many other situations, keep reading. Uh, and it's amazing when uh, uh, theology, and, and I don't, it, it, a lot of times when I explain this, I also point out that Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 uh, is really talking about uh, the Gentiles as opposed to the Jewish people. It's a community statement uh, as they are described as having uh, once been far off, but now being brought near. So, you know, it, when you need a verse to back up your position, uh, it's very important that you don't pay attention to the context because sometimes you won't be able to use the verse. And this is an example. First of all, the verse they quote is, doesn't mean what they think it means. And then the verse that comes right afterwards uh, contradicts what they often say. And like I said, uh, as we're laughing uh, at errors in interpretation, we need to be careful that, that we don't make the same mistakes. Uh, when we become uh, self-righteous and, and feel like uh, it, it's all about pointing out to people where they're doing things wrong, uh, I, I believe that we are very susceptible to developing a blind spot to the areas in our own life uh, where we are not doing what the Lord has shown us that we need to be doing. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, we find a repetition of what are uh, referred to as the Ten Words uh, or Ten Commandments uh, that the people received from the Lord through Moses at Mount Sinai as first recounted uh, in Exodus chapter 20. Now, while the Hebrew refers to them as the Ten Words uh, in this passage, they're actually referred to uh, as the Ten Statutes or Judgments. Um, and the Israelites... Uh, understood that their works would be a reflection of their faith, of what they believed. Three different times, Exodus 19, verse 8, 24, verse 3, and 24, verse 7, they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And the last time they added the word Shema. As Exodus 24, verse 7 says, the third time that they said it, they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will na'aseh v'nishma. We will do and we will hearken. Uh, and, and so once again, we have this idea that it's not simply um, hearing or even studying, but it's much more, do we obey? Do we carry it out? Uh, do we live out these truths? Because it, it's easy to talk about them. I, I like to say uh, the challenge is when the rubber meets the road. Uh, and, and I like to use an ex as an example for those of us uh, who may <coughs> operate in the working world, uh, where first thing in the morning on Monday morning, uh, after a long weekend, 
you know, you come into the office and you can either come in, you know, dragging and, and searching for that first cup of coffee, or you can come in saying, man, it was a glorious weekend and I'm hoping we're going to have a great week as well and be positive and, and be encouraging and live out the truths even first thing Monday morning, even when the trials and tribulations are coming our way. I mean, it's easy to say praise the Lord on the mountaintop, but when we're down in the valley, are we still able to say praise the Lord? We have the gift of salvation. We certainly have reason. In addition to doing it because we know He desires to bless us. And we know that it will be really a blessing for us to have a much more positive attitude. Sometimes what uh, is termed an attitude of gratitude. You know, we can't control the circumstances in our life. We can ask the Lord to take us out of those circumstances, to remove them. We can ask Him to be with us through the trial. But we definitely can control how we respond to it. And whether or not our response is a testimony that says more to the world that is watching us than all of the words that have come out of our mouth uh, before that point. Because they're watching to see, as I've pointed out on several occasions, are we going to live out what we say? And if you don't believe that, just try not doing it uh, and see how they don't respond and point out to you, well, wait a minute. You say you believe this, but you're acting like this. They're, they're ready to catch you. Why? Because they're watching us. Why are they watching us? There may be a certain element that says, yeah, I'd like to prove them wrong. But there's also an element that's saying, I want to see if somebody can really live out that truth. If it's, if it's real to them or if they're just repeating what they've heard. If they're just repeating borrowed convictions. One of the blessings of trials in our life is that is when borrowed convictions become our convictions. I call them borrowed convictions because as we're growing up, all sorts of authority figures in our life tell us what to do. They tell us what the scriptures mean. They tell us how we should react in various situations. And then when we become adults and we go through trials or even on the road to adulthood, as we go through trials and we decide for ourselves, are these really my convictions? And that's why it's so important to, to live out these truths. Uh, because even our young people are watching us, our children, our grandchildren. Uh, and they're saying, you know, I, I've heard you say all this stuff. I don't even know what it means. But I'm watching to see how you're living it out. Uh, and frequently we find ourselves doing things that our grandparents did that we don't even realize that's why we're doing it. So we want to be an example of positive influence in their life. We want to be an example of the way the Lord can make changes uh, in uh, his fallen creation. Uh, in, in sinners who tend to be uh, selfish and worry about protecting ourselves. And, you know, our, our flesh tends to uh, want to see how many toys we can accumulate in life. But we have to overcome our fleshly nature and put it to death so that we might be able to glorify God and be a, a testimony to the world because we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Uh, and and the, the word is what we say. The testimony is how we live it out. Verses 4 through 9 of Deuteronomy 6 uh, summarize the Lord's instructions to His people as we recite in the Shema and the Via Hafta every Friday night. Uh, the names of these prayers come from the first Hebrew word in the prayer. The Shema is a community proclamation of the Lord's oneness. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 says, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God. He is our God, Eloheinu in the Hebrew, the God of all of us, of the entire community. And in the next verse, he is Elohecha, the Lord, your God. So one verse away, the uh, way he is described is completely different. And so uh, here is Adonai Eloheinu, the Lord our God, Adonai Echad, the Lord is one. 
Uh, the oneness of God made Israel unique among the nations. The nations around the Israelites believed in many gods, right? A sun god, a moon god, a god of war, a god of uh, thunder, etc. Uh, and if you believe that, you did all you could to keep these gods happy so that they would not destroy you. There was no love in the relationship, unlike what we see in the verse following the Shema. In the Via Hafta, each individual is told, as we recited earlier, Via Hafta et Adonai Elohecha, and you, thou, uh, as an individual, shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Not only does God love us, but we are called to love him in return. Unlike the other gods of this world, our fellowship with our Creator is based not on fear, but on love. And in Deuteronomy 6, verse 6, these words that the Lord commands you this day shall be where? Upon the heart, the, the lev. God wants His words to be a core part of our existence. The heart in the Scriptures represents the place of motivation, the place uh, where we truly are what we are. Uh, and he wants uh, his words to be the, the motivating factor for what we do. Deuteronomy 6 verse 7 says we're to teach these words diligently to our children. Uh, that This is not only a, a, a community aspect, but it's also transferred within the family. To speak of them throughout the day, uh, when walking about, lying down, rising up. Um, we're to be continuously living for the Lord so that our children will see an example of faithfulness and obedience in our lives so that we are able to teach them how much God loves them and to help them to understand the blessings of being obedient to our loving Heavenly Father. And of course, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Because Hasatan, the adversary, is out there. Our own fleshly uh, nature is out there. All of the baggage of our lives that are issues that we may have that we haven't really resolved uh, or dealt with in the past uh, come back and frequently uh, we respond almost by instinct before we have time to think of it uh, in anger or uh, in, in uh, an attack on the other person. And so uh, it, this is not the example that we want to set for our children. And, you know, one of the um, most interesting parts of parenthood is being able to see your children act, act out what they've learned from you and wanting to criticize them for it, but realize the reason they're doing it is because they learned it from you and the one that you probably need to criticize more than them uh, is, is getting your own act together and setting an example that would cause them to see another way of behaving in that circumstance. Deuteronomy 6 verse 8 specifies locations where the Word of God is to be placed, and the Jewish people take these instructions literally. Uh, some put on the tefillin or uh, phylacteries uh, to bind these words upon their hands and to have them as frontlets uh, between their eyes. According to Deuteronomy 6, verse 9, they're also to be written on the doorposts of our houses, uh, which we do in what is uh, called a mezuzah, or mezuzah, which actually is the Hebrew word for doorpost. And we have uh, mezuzot, the plural, uh, on the entrances to this building. Some of us have them in our homes, and we sell them in our gift shop uh, if you want one as well. And then we have Yeshua, uh, when he was asked what is the greatest commandment, he quotes the Shema and the Via Hafta in his response, as we read earlier from Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 31. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Uh, once again, when he quotes it, he quotes it as a community statement. He didn't say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God. He said, The Lord our God. So first of all, he's quoting it accurately, and second of all, he's including himself uh, as part of that community. 
and then he quotes the next verse as the individualized instruction that it is. And you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. <coughs> and the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there's a parallel passage in Matthew where Yeshua sums, sums things up, sums things up, I uh, need to get those new uppers um, that I've ordered. Uh, in that saying, uh, on these two commandments, in Matthew 22, verse 40, on these two commandments depend all of the law and the prophets. Do we find following just two commandments difficult? I believe that if we were always to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and might, there would be no divorce between believers. There would be no estrangement in believing families. There would be no conflicts amongst believers, and there would be no discord, no division in the body of believers in Messianic synagogues. So it looks like we still have some work to do in this area, I'm afraid. Uh, in the last part of the Torah portion, Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 through 9, we find out why the Jewish people are called the chosen people. They were chosen not because of their great numbers, for they were fewest of all people. The Lord often works through small numbers. Uh, that is how He is able to demonstrate His power. Uh, here's what Yeshua says in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Go in through the narrow gate, for the gate that leads to destruction is wide, and the road broad, and many travel it. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road. Uh-oh. How many want to experience the hard road? A narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Looks like we're going to have to be, get used to being in the minority, which the flesh doesn't like. But it will only be until the day when, as it says in Philippians 2, verses 10 and 11, Every knee will bow and every tongue will acknowledge Yeshua the Messiah as Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen. We may be in the minority now and that presents its challenges, but we bring blessing to a world that desperately needs to know it. But one day the world is going to see, even our Jewish people are going to see, and every knee will bow. We will be in the majority. Now I want to briefly talk about the Haftarah portion for this week, Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 26. In Isaiah 39, Isaiah talks about the Babylonian captivity. But the words of Isaiah 40 suggest that the Lord is in charge, and He is using Babylon to uh, discipline His people. Uh, but He also provides the comfort that they would at some point in the future dwell once again in Jerusalem. Isaiah 40, verse 1, starts out with words of consolation. You've already heard them tonight. Nakamu, nakamu, ami. Uh, comfort my people. And the doubling of the Hebrew, nakamu, puts extra emphasis on this comforting. Jerusalem is receiving double words of consolation. Just as in Isaiah 40, verse 2, she's received double punishment for all her sins. Is this fair? Well, in Exodus 4, verse 22, Israel is described as the Lord's firstborn. And as a result, they're entitled to the extra blessing that goes along with being the firstborn. But also, when they go astray, they receive extra punishment. There's a lot of people who want the extra blessing, but they're not so quick for the extra punishment. In verse 5, we see the glory of the Lord will be revealed through the Jewish people as a testimony to the world. The good news will come to Zion. What is the good news? In verse 10, we're told the Lord God will come with power. His arm, His Zeroah, will rule for Him, and His reward is with Him. The cities of Judah will be told that their God is here. And how will they respond according to Yeshua in Matthew 23, verse 39? They will say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the Haftarah portion ends in Isaiah 40, verse 26, with Isaiah telling Israel, Lift up your eyes to the heavens. 
We're also told to look up in Luke 21, verses 20 and 27 and 28, as we're told that a battle will take place over Jerusalem after the time of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. And that is when we are to look up, for our redemption draws near. Our hearts should not be troubled as the days grow darker, for our light will grow brighter as our redemption draws near. May we experience the shalom, the peace of God, which passes all understanding as we learn to trust even more in the Holy One of Israel, no matter what this world may throw at us in the days ahead. And Lord, it is my prayer that we would understand mathematics, your version of mathematics, that we would experience multiplication of blessings while we avoid division in our community and that we would not add to or subtract from His revelation to us, which is perfect. Let us pray. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the first steps to trusting in You is to accept the means of atonement that You have provided. So if you're here tonight or you're watching this video at some later point, and you realize that there is only one way that you can be seen as righteous in God's sight, and that's by accepting Messiah uh, Yeshua's sacrifice on your behalf that brings forgiveness for your rebellion against the ways of your Creator, just like our people Israel have experienced, that He might be able to bless you uh, as He desires to do, so that you might have a restored relationship with the Creator of the universe, uh, with every head bowed in prayer, every eye closed. All you have to do is raise your hand to say yes to the Holy One of Israel tonight. Yes to the provision of His Son as a sacrifice for your sins. If you're watching on the video, you can raise your hand just as a commitment that you want to receive the gift of salvation, the gift of Yeshua that our Creator offers to each one of us. For those of us who have already accepted Yeshua as our Messiah, perhaps you realize that you've been adding to or taking away from God's revelation. Maybe you have your own definition of what it means to live for Him. But now you realize that you want to spend more time trying to seek revelation from Him and understand the revelation that He has provided so that you can live according to the instructions that He has given to us and that you will experience a blessing through that. Maybe you didn't realize the importance of works as a believer, that one day our heavenly rewards will be based on what we've done in this life. We also uh, have to be careful to avoid uh, the trap of legalism, uh, doing things out of fear instead uh, rather than out of love. Or maybe you've come to see that you're not loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, and might. Uh, that's a real challenge for all of us. Uh, the first step is having His Torah written on our hearts uh, as we say to Him, not your will, but uh, not my will, but your will be done. As uh, we just desire to um, trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and need, need, lean not on our own understanding, but ask Him in all our ways to direct our paths. Uh, you know, when we put, as a result, our personal relationships should improve. Uh, we will be able to more uh, successfully put the needs of others before our own. Our anger issues should improve. We should be much quicker to apologize in a heartfelt and meaningful way and slow to offend. Now, maybe the Lord has uh, shown you, even right now, someone that you have offended and you want to commit to getting right with them. Or maybe you've doubted God's faithfulness in some area, but you now realize that we have a faithful, miracle-working God, and no matter what you are going through, you can put your trust in Him. You can seek His comfort tonight. So if you feel the Lord speaking to you in one of these areas, or maybe even some other area that He has revealed to you tonight by the, the Ruach, by um, the Spirit, once again, I would ask you to raise your hand just as a, a uh, reminder that you have made this commitment before the Lord uh, so that you won't doubt it later. Just raising your hand to say, yes, Lord, 
Your will be done. And Lord, I desire to make this change that you have shown me. As Lord, we ask in the name of Yeshua uh, that you would speak by the Ruach, by your spirit, to those who desire to make the changes uh, that you have revealed to them. Lord, I ask you to provide shalom in our times of struggle, to uh, begin uh, the process, Lord, of making families whole, to bring about reconciliation uh, in family and other close relationships. As Lord, we desire to represent you uh, as we come into contact, as we try to uh, be an influencer for you in this world, that the truth of your love would be made manifest in our lives. And that, uh, Lord, you would use us for your purposes and that you would uh, reveal to us even greater truths uh, in the coming week. And we ask all of these things in the name of our Messiah, Yeshua. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you all. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to call our cantor back up uh, as we uh, conclude our service uh, with uh, blessings and a closing song. Uh, and I uh, want to thank everybody who had a part in the service this evening. And uh, I just uh, hope that you will have a great week ahead uh, in the Lord. Blessing over the fruit of the vine. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord of God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. L'chaim, to life. L'chaim. <clears throat> Since we had no visitors, I'm going to trust that you all have heard me explain week after week what L'chaim means. And so we say to life. Blessing over the bread. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord of God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread and all manner of food from the earth. Yeshua HaMashiach is the bread of life, born in Beit Lechem, the house of bread. Amen. Amen. The gentleman that I described who uh, came here and was asking questions, he also mentioned that this was the longest service that he had ever uh, experienced. And the thought that went through my mind, I actually just read a survey where they were uh, asking young people and young adults, you know, what do you think about the services? And they were, you know, asking, what did you think if, how do you feel about a service going longer than two hours? Or even some Messianic services are three hours long. So I. Uh, felt like um, that if he knew what some other congregations were doing, uh, he might not see that as being quite as long. Uh, but anyway, it, they said that they wanted sermons that were 15 minutes to 30 minutes in length. Um, I, I tried to get close um, to that, but if you really need shorter sermons, let me know and I'll talk faster. No, uh, well, I can talk pretty fast. Anyway, um, now we want to pronounce the blessing found in Numbers chapter 6, the Lord's words of blessing uh, to be pronounced over his people. So we would encourage you to stand and receive uh, this blessing of the Lord this evening. Vagishmarecha Yaher Adonai Panavalecha Vikunecha Isa Adonai Panavalecha Vayasem Lecha Vayasem Lecha Shalom. May Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai cause His face to shine towards you and show you His favor. May Adonai turn His face towards you and give you His peace, His shalom. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have our closing song. It's the Ein Kelohenu. It means there is no one like our God. We'll sing it first in the Hebrew, and then we'll sing the English. And when you're singing the English, you can sing it like you mean it. Ain Kalohenu. Ain Kalohenu. Ain Kadonenu. Ain Kamohenu. Ain Kamoshienu. Mi Kalohenu. Mi Kadonenu. Mi Kamohenu.
Tomo Kainu, Mi Komo Shinu, No De La Lo Hainu, No De La Do Nainu, No De La Mo Kainu, No De La Mo Shinu, Baru Ke Lo Hainu, Baru Ka Do Nainu, Baru Mo Kainu, Baru Mo Shinu, Ata Hu Lo Hainu, Ata Hu Ano Nainu. And now the English. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our Lord. There is no one like our King. There is no one like Messiah. Who is like our God? Who is like our Lord? Who is like our King? Who is like our Messiah? We give thanks to our God, we give thanks to our Lord, we give thanks to our King, we give thanks to our Messiah. Blessed be our God, blessed be our Lord, blessed be our King, blessed be our Messiah. You are the one, our God, you are the one, our Lord, you are the one, our King, you are the one, our Messiah. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy the time of fellowship. Have a great week in the Lord. Shabbat Shalom. And one other thing I see as I close the book, uh, Sarah Fredrickson is in this performance. I think we have the uh, brochure on the materials table. You can take a look uh, if you're interested. Uh, I think tomorrow's the uh, last uh, performance. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.